I would like to introduce our last speaker for today, Elon Levy. Elon is an Israeli government spokesman. He is a former international media advisor to the President of Israel and a former TV news anchor. Born and raised here in the UK, he studied at the universities of Oxford and Cambridge before making Aliyah and serving in the IDF. Elon has become a media phenomenon in the past few months by giving a strong and clear voice to so many people in Israel. We are grateful for his tireless efforts on behalf of Israel and delighted that he is here with us today. Wow. <laughs> Chief Rabbi, Sir Ephraim Mervis, Your Excellency Ambassador Tsipi Hotovelli, 25,000 friends and allies. <laughs> Romy Gonen has an infectious sense of humor. The middle of five children, Romy, 23, is the glue that holds her family together. A loyal and devoted friend, clumsy, but a dancer. A waitress, working to fund her next big adventure around the world. The light in a world that went dark. On October 7th, Romy was at the Nova Music Festival, dancing with strangers, at the prime of their lives, having the time of their lives marked down for death. At dawn, Hamas death squads invaded. By dusk, one in 10 of those party goers would be dead. From the killing fields, Romy called her mother Mirav, who listened helplessly on the phone as her daughter was abducted into Gaza abducted by the men who burned, beheaded, and raped their way through Israel that day. For 100 days, Romy Gonen has been a hostage of the Hamas rapist regime. I told her mother Merav that I would be here today and asked her what message she wants to share with you packing out Trafalgar Square in London. She said, don't look away, and don't let anyone else look away either. Only light will triumph over darkness, the light we shine by standing together, keeping each other warm in the cold. And that is your mission, that is our mission, to shine a light so others can see, so they cannot look away. Because trapped with Romy in the Hamas terror dungeons are so many hostages that if they stood on each other's shoulders, they would reach a height of four Nelson's columns behind me. And captive with them in Gaza are our hearts. Captive, as it says on these dog tags, Halev Shilanu Shavui Be'aza. Our hearts are captive in Gaza. It also says, bring them home now. The pro-Hamas, pro-Houthi mob that filled these streets yesterday wants to silence us. But I need you all to shout. Shout for those who cannot speak. 
Shout for Romy, shout for the Bibas family and one-year-old Kfir. Shout for Nadav, shout for Hirsch Goldberg Polin, his left arm blown off from the elbow down by Hamas grenades. Shout for Oded Lifshitz, 83, shot in the hand as he tried to bolt the door of his safe room and save his wife. Shout for all 136. Shout so they can hear you all the way up in the ivory towers of the Red Cross offices in Geneva and all the way down in the Hamas terror dungeons in Gaza. Bring them home now. Bring them home now. Bring them home now. Bring them home now. It has been 100 days since October 7th. 100 days of October 7th. 100 days when time has stood still. Forgive me for repeating the obvious. We didn't start this war. We didn't want this war. We didn't even expect this war. Hamas broke a ceasefire and declared war on us with the bloodiest massacre of Jews since the Holocaust. We are fighting to end this war and we are fighting to end this war with our hostages home and with Hamas never again able to slaughter our friends and family as it has spent day and night telling us it wants to do again and again. Because we know there is no future for the Jewish people or the state of Israel in a world in which an army of terror can reduce whole families to human ash from Auschwitz and get away with it. No future if Hamas emerges free and emboldened to do it again, free and emboldened as the hate parades through London want it to emerge from this war it started. And so we fight, not because we want to, but because we must. Because the forces that rise up in every generation have risen up in ours too. We don't want the world's sympathy. Israel exists because we're sick of its tears. We demand the world's respect. We demand its respect because we are doing exactly what they would do if, God forbid, they were subjected to such a barbaric assault, exactly what they would like to think they would be capable of doing to bring their children home safe. And people respect you when you stand up for yourself. Stand up to the bullies. Stand with Israel. October 7th brought out the worst of our enemies and the best of us. It shone a light on a nation of everyday heroes who drove into the fire to save total strangers from slaughter, who grabbed what little firepower to defend their homes, who discovered fire in their bellies to fight for their children's and parents' freedom. And we need you to be everyday heroes, everyday heroes who stand for what is right, because that is who we are. Jewish history has always been about the courage to do what is right, to be the dissidents who look around the world and say, this is crazy, this is wrong. And our enemies are, to borrow a phrase, trying to Gaza light us. They are trying to make us doubt our humanity, doubt our morality, doubt our sanity. But if anyone thinks we are going to abandon the hostages in the hands of the Hamas rapist regime, it is their humanity, their morality, their sanity that must stand in the dock. We choose life. And we need you. Come to Israel on solidarity missions. Volunteer. 
bear witness, donate, write to your MPs, get your friends and family to do the same. Wear these dog tags till the last hostage is free. Be part of this moment in history. Be part of this moment of togetherness, this moment of Jewish solidarity. Use your voice. You have one. Be proud of it. We are not alone. And the free democracies of this world stand with us. We have friends, but those friends are feeling intimidated right now. They feel scared to do what is right and stand by our side as we bring to justice the terrorist monsters threatening us with more October 7th. And they need your help. I want to say something not only as an official Israeli spokesman, but also as a proud son of British Jewry. And I want to thank Semach Productions for flying me out to be part of this moment with my home community. All of us know that the fundamentally decent people of Britain and His Majesty's government know that Hamas rides roughshod over every value they hold dear. They know that we are fighting for humanity on the front lines of humanity. The British public is watching today's rally on a split screen, split between our display of decency and yesterday's parade of hate. They see the sea of British flags here in Trafalgar Square, a protest far smaller than yesterday, and so much more love for this country. Here, nobody is calling for Houthi terror attacks against British forces and British targets, like the mobs calling for Yemen to make them proud and turn another ship around. Here, nobody is calling for intifada. That means more 7-7 attacks or distributing leaflets glorifying prescribed terrorist organizations. Here, nobody is storming restaurants or turning the center of London into a no-go zone for thousands of law-abiding citizens. The British public can see that many of the people marching since the October 7 massacre gave them the thrill of their lives, marching to save Hamas, are also calling for attacks on Britain. On one side, Hamas rapists and Houthi pirates. On the other side, Israel and the United Kingdom. I know which side we choose. The fight against Hamas is not just Israel's fight, it is humanity's fight. Humanity's fight against barbarism. So I beseech you, find that courage to fight for hope. Hope for peace in a post-Hamas world peace with any and all of our neighbors willing to regard us in the land of Israel and the Jewish diaspora as human beings worthy of basic human dignity. For as long as deep in our broken hearts, that life-affirming Jewish soul still yearns, even in the valley of the shadow of death, we know that all hope is not lost. The dead will never walk again. Those burned, beheaded, butchered by Hamas and the brave men and women who have fallen as heroes. But we can still fight for the living. Fight for the living buried alive. Fight like lions. Fight like our lives and your lives and their lives depend on it because they do. Fight to bring them home now. Bring them home. The state of Israel stands firm by the sacred pledge that has guided us ever since we reclaimed our sovereignty 
in our ancient homeland. The people of Israel will go to the ends of the earth to bring our people home to safety and their tormentors to justice. 100 days after October 7th, one day after yet another hate parade in London, we stand here outnumbered and outmanned, yes, but uncowed, unafraid, united. Holding our heads up high, determined to climb out of our darkest hour and light up that darkness with our love for each other and our love for Israel. After October 7th, nothing can ever be the same again. Never forgive, never forget, never again. Thank you, everyone. Keep calm and Am Israel Chai. Thank you.